Hi, I'm the sun. And this is what I actually look like. I just look like this currently because it's cuter. Yeah, let's go with that. I'm actually in the middle of my life. I'm a yellow star, just waiting to have my midlife crisis. <laughs> there are two kinds of baby stars, low mass stars and high mass stars. Low mass stars turn into stars like me, and high mass stars are born as massive stars. Regardless, both are born from matter in interstellar clouds. And no, I'm not talking about the movie with Matthew McConaughey. It's actually a cold, dark cloud of dust and hydrogen gas. Weirdly enough, when a star dies, 90% of its original mass returns to space. So basically, these stars are born from dead stars. This is actually called stellar recycling. They have mostly hydrogen, 71% of its mass, and helium, 27%. The dust is composed of solid microscopic particles made mostly of silicates, carbon, and iron compounds. It's pretty cold. Atoms and molecules move around too slow to generate much pressure. As a result, the pressure in the cold gas might not be large enough to support the cloud against its own gravity. If this cloud is disturbed, it might actually collapse. This could be triggered by colliding with neighborhood clouds, an explosion of a star, and honestly, tons of other things. These clouds don't really have a shape to them, but sometimes I like to pretend I can actually see stuff. They actually have smaller clumps of gas where it tends to be denser than the average. These clouds might break off into smaller pieces where stars could form from that. In result, stars are rarely formed isolated. You know, unless they are feeling edgy. You're the ones that didn't invite me over for quinoa! All of these stars within a group approximately form at the same time. Kind of like siblings. This first stage is when a dense clump called a block globule. I don't even know. The cloud starts to collapse. Glass is drawn inward by gravity, which compresses it and heats it up. The second stage, any rotation of this gas starts to form into a disk. In about, um, about a million years, the middle of the disk starts to form into a hot, dense core called a protostar, which is actually the third stage. A protostar is hot. It is hotter than the gas it was made from, but it is still cooler than most stars. Its pretty low temperature makes it shine, mostly at infrared wavelengths rather than a visible one. The dust around it actually blocks most of the visible light. These protostars don't remain so cool for long. Gravity continues to bring in the surrounding material into it, and it gets denser and denser and hotter and hotter as this continues. When the core of the protostar reaches one million Kelvin, some nuclear reactions begin here. These reactions fuse with the hydrogen isotope known as deuterium into helium. Energy supplied by deuterium fusion replenishes the energy that is radiating from the star, so the star stops contracting while this fuel is being used. Once the deuterium is used up, the protostar resumes its contraction. A protostar passes through these stages in a very brief time compared to astronomical standards. This happens during a few million years for a star, like me. It's even less for a massive star. As the star continues to form, the infall material causes very violent changes in brightness and a strong outflow of gas. These are narrow jets of gas pointed in opposite directions called bipolar flows. It is called this because two jets are ejected parallel to the polar axis. We don't know what makes them so narrow. Well, I mean I do, but I'm going to keep my secrets to myself. These are actually a pretty important role to cleaning up after the star has been born. These bipolar flows clear away the gas and dust around the protostar, so you guys can see it with visible light. Though the force of these bipolar flows isn't enough to push everything away, a lot is left behind. A lot of young stars immerse in interstellar matter. These stars often vary erratically in brightness. Sometimes they have streams of gas going from their surface, this is often in the upper atmosphere. I know it sounds like it's pretty similar to the bipolar flows, but it's actually more like solar wind, but way more intense. Young stars that show light similar to outflowing gas is called titayuri stars. Titayuri stars? Titayuri. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. These stars show some evidence of, of giant things that look a lot like sunspots. And magnetic flares way more intense than our suns. We can see these spots through infrared telescopes. Now, back to low mass and high mass stars. Most stars have a mass between 0.1 to 30 solar mass. Stars that are smaller than 0.1, 
are rarely seen because their mass is too small. Stars that are this small are often called brown dwarfs because of the dim red light emitting from them. Only recently we started finding them because of technology. High mass stars are actually rare for a different reason. As gravity squeezes them, they quickly become extremely hot and bright. They are so hot that they heat up the gas around them, raising the pressure and actually preventing additional material to fall into them. These stars are so bright that the gases on the outer layers are stripped and they're thrown into space. Basically, a star with 200 solar mass kind of shines its way out of existence. I want to be that bright. But, uh, that's basically it. At least, all that I am allowed to talk about.